George, your company is gathering data from the sequencing of human genomes. What information can be gained from doing this? Researchers around the world, mainly large pharmaceutical companies, uh, need to know uh, who is at risk, uh, sort of new pharmaceuticals, and who is uh, exceptionally not at risk for a particular disease. Um, there are very rare individuals around the world that are resistant naturally to a whole variety of uh diseases and you'd like to figure out what it is that makes them their environment or their genes that make them specifically resistant and bottle that essentially. So for example, we've discovered individuals who have rare resistance to heart disease, PCSK9 is the gene, or resistant to HIV, which is a great scourge, CCR5 is the gene. And there are things you can do for yourself if you have a disease uh, predisposition. Uh, You just don't know it until you get your whole genome sequence. So basically everybody needs to see their own genome to find out. And so how specifically does your technology work in gaining and storing and analyzing this data? Well, first of all, we do the whole genome, uh, not uh, something called exomes or SNPs, uh, which which is uh, medically uh, much more valuable. You retain uh, possession of it. So even when somebody wants to ask a question, they're asking what combination of genes, environments, and traits or diseases uh, pertain to a population uh, of which you're a part, so they're not, they're not, you're not giving them your genome, even briefly, you're answering, you're allowing them to answer questions. Or if you want to answer questions about yourself, you don't need to learn, you don't need to see your own genome, you can protect yourself from anything that's not medically actionable by your definition. You can decide in advance what you are willing to, uh, to share, even in encrypted form. And so what's the biggest hurdle you see in seeing mass adoption and having this as a regular part of uh, the healthcare system and being able to research and and develop drugs and medicine? Well, I think one barrier uh, that's been eliminated, uh, there's no longer a barrier, is the cost. It's now, uh, you know, on the order of $500 cost, but $0 to the individual because of this new nebula system. Uh, Another was uh, uh, privacy and uh, security, which is now solved with this uh, encryption and blockchain methods. People have to hear stories of people that have gained, that have obtained benefit. It's a little bit like seatbelts. Uh, a lot of people had seatbelts, but they didn't use them. They have to. There has to be some mechanism by which we uh, improve the public health, uh, even even once it's free and safe. So, George, how long before we actually see mass adoption of human genome sequencing in healthcare? Well, we're already seeing uh, pretty extensive use in, among people who have, uh, you know, severe diseases and they don't know what's causing it. Um, but there, are, everybody is at risk, uh, and you'd like to do it preventatively rather than waiting until the disease is there. Uh, so it's 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 kind of like there's no particular day, but but there might be uh, a tipping point where we go from the very tiny number of people right now that are getting maybe less than a fraction of a percent to everybody. Um, in the same sense that 1993 was kind of the year that we went from almost nobody having a computer to everybody having uh, some kind of access to the Internet.